this trophy yet. So yeah, please. Uh, okay. Like this game was. okay, well, for 24 yeah. hours is allowed. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the thing is, yes, I lose here, yeah, but uh, well, I don't know. Looking at some of the issues that played out, this one is more. This is heavy now. <laughs> they had so a lot of people. Big so, and uh, I mean, everybody wants a break from all of these hassles. Everybody just needed at least a boost, a break. But unfortunately, unfortunately, there are some who who died while they were watching. So news just coming through. So people need to just be cautious, be mm. careful how they go through some of these. Uh, matches and so when Ayo says he doesn't watch it, it's understandable. So, mm. but just check and be sure you have to be alive, you have to stay alive to enjoy mm. all of this victory while you can. So, two people are joining us this morning, but unfortunately, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Amunike couldn't make it, he had to just uh, some circumstances came through, so he won't be here today. But we do have uh, alongside Lalu here. Mr. Ida Pizzasaidi joins us as well today to talk us through some of these matters. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program as well this morning. But before I come to you, Mr. Pizzasaidi, let me ask Laulu um, on this. First, let's get this out of the way. We looked at some of these issues that played out. Mm -hmm. The government, the court order for the government to ensure that they regulate prices and see how things go through. There's been protest in some parts of the country. They say owing to the rising cost of living and they can't cope with that anymore. The government themselves have met saying, we hear you. Mm -hmm. We're doing what we can to ensure that that doesn't become your situation in the long run. But how people internalize that and how their policies match up with their action, I think that will be one of the biggest challenges that they will face. But what's your assessment of how all of these things have been handled? Okay, thank you, and, and, and good morning. Uh, and by the way, we, we pray that uh, the, the, the memory of uh, Mr. Carol Jubo uh, will remain blessed, you know, and may rest in peace. Uh, well, you know, so what I think has happened essentially is a wake-up call. You know, if you look at what that court ruling is, um, I'm sure that we're going to have the debate among the lawyers whether this is something that can actually compel specific actions on the part of government. I've heard some of them say that, well, look, this thing cannot be enforced. But what we cannot deny is the fact that there is requirement, in there, there are constitutional requirements that compels government to take the welfare of the people seriously. And that's the, that, that, that is one lesson that we cannot uh, uh, remove from that court ruling, that the court is saying that, hey, you've got to deal with the issue of uh, uh, price inflation, you know, because government has the instruments to make, you know, to, 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 to deliver that kind of good in terms of uh, reasonable prices, welfare, even in terms of security. Government has the resources to make it happen. So that is how I interpret you know, uh, the, the, the ruling and, and, it's, and the, the implication. The other thing I want to say is that it's important for, for the people that are at the head of government, whether in the state or at the federal, you know, that look, for instance, in the federal, it is about the president. The president is going to get the blame or the praise for what is happening. This is happening under his watch. Now, I can say, you know, because of, uh, of, of what I experienced, that a lot of the problems that we are dealing with today, they have been on for a long time. And there are people that understand the problem even more than uh, the, the average guy. I think that the president should reach out wider. His party, the APC, has been in government for eight years. There are people that have been working on this problem for eight years. It's important to benefit from their insight. Don't forget what I said. It is he that will take the blame or the press, or the, or the press, whichever way it goes. But the question then is, uh, because part of what we did ask them is, this decision by the courts, do you see it being practicable? Yeah, well, you know, so lawyers will have to, uh, to, to, to deal with that question, but I, 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 I imagine that it's going to be difficult to... Uh, to enforce, but hey, what do I know? Uh, we, 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 right. we, we are going to see what happens. But I, like I said, it is important that the court is making a ruling on the matter. It underscores 
the criticality of governance. You are in power, you have the, the, the resources of force, you have the resources of state to ensure that there is welfare for the people. And besides, the, the economic management team and the president, they need to show uh, that they know what this is about and they know what they're doing. Because, look, the prices, basic amenities, mm. staples are going over the roof. And, well, and there isn't any guarantee that that is how far it can go. It will yet go higher it can go worse. tomorrow. It will be worse than this tomorrow. And people are already saying, what can be worse than what we're facing right now? So it's up to them to see how all of this is addressed moving forward. But speaking about blame and praise, I think it's all praise for the Super Eagles right now uh, okay. because they, they put smiles on everybody's faces. I know, Mr. Peterside, you did uh, give us an inkling even though many thought it was just mere prediction, but well, who would have thought when you said that call out yesterday? Know. But was it just a, you know just a guess? You just hazarded a guess, and then that was it. No, come on, come on, Chairman. I'm an expert. No, come on, come on, Chairman. I'm an expert. No, come on. No, come on. I might not be expert in politics or football, like my brother is talking about. So for this one, it's about, you know, but yes, we, we knew we knew something was going to come out. You see, especially when you create a momentum, we had we have momentum on our side. Um, after our last game, where we beat Angola, everybody started believing again. I was watching a, a video this morning of um, uh, Osime, where Osime said he didn't have any reason to play yesterday, that he was in so much pain. And that he had to almost crawl to to, to knock at the door of his uh, um, teammate for them to know that he was dying. That's what how bad it was. But he said we've all made sacrifices, and that's what you need. You know, we've always complained that those boys were not giving out, giving us enough. Those of us that played for the national team know what it means now to sacrifice and and know what it means to play for your country. So we saw we saw that yesterday we. You know, from the last three, four games, we've seen this uh, union among themselves. And like Osina said yesterday, said um, that everybody should just leave their story behind until they come back with the cup. Well, that match, that match yesterday, if mm. the South African had taken those chances, I know we can only say that now, thankfully. Yeah. But then, there must be lessons there for us because... The kind of attack that our defense faced this time was different. And so would we say that um, it was owing to our tactical approach or, or, or what? What did you attribute that to, how we scaled through? Yes, yes. We, we did well. The defense did well. It was, I told you yesterday it was going to be the toughest game we've played. And I think they waited for us. You know, they planned against us. We have two central defenders that are not too fast, not too quick. Uh, and they had their two, two stock strikers that were as quick as lightning. So all they did, they would let us play and come forward and just drop the ball behind our defense. And it kept challenging us. Again, credit goes to our goalkeeper. You know, I think he's... Um, and I think they said if um, Tinebu cannot save the Naira, Wabali can. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he was, he was fantastic yesterday, and he was was our hero for the night. Mr. Peter said, just so, so we can we can actually get because you are in Port Harcourt right now, and we've seen videos online yes. of of uh, people going to Mwabali's uh, father's house uh, yesterday mm. after the game, and you know the mood had just been really ecstatic. I want you to be able to talk to you a little bit about our next game. What should we be doing mm. differently as we face Ivory Coast in that final? I know Nigerians are very excited about this match, but there is a final we have to get ready for. What should we be doing differently? This, this would have, this, I, we all knew this, um, this was going to be our toughest game. The game against Ivory Coast will be easier than this. Why? Because we've beaten them already in the qualifiers. Remember, we beat them in our group stage. We beat them 1-0. They only survived by sheer luck or messes to get here. I watched the game against Congo yesterday. They are not as good as we are. All they have is just, I remember years of uh, Fanny Amo, they've just fumbled and wumbled and fumbled and wumbled into the finals. And they'll be under tremendous pressure. Even if they lose at this finals, they've done well. 
we always wanted the host team to do well, to at least get to the semifinals, so that they can end up in the semifinals, the third place or the finals. They have achieved that. They have succeeded in anything they've planned for. But they're meeting a formidable side. What we, do we do? We, people fear us. We're in Nigeria. I've always said this over and over again. We're in Nigeria. We have this pedigree going for us. The final game will be so easy. I say it again. It will be so easy that I think we will win easily. Careful. Is it, is it really <laughs> as easy as saving Naira? Yeah. <laughs> uh, careful, careful. 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 This, like this, this level of confidence. Hmm. <laughs> yes, we should yes. be careful. You, 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 you need to, you, you know, it's like the, the weatherman. The weatherman tells you, he I reads see. the weather and tells you 25 degrees, 30 degrees because they look at trends and they look at I don't know, whatever they look at. But we, we, we've played this game, you know. Like I said, I'm not a politician, but you you know you've been in the system for a long time. The the, the butterflies that were put in their stomach on Sunday will be unbelievable. They have gotten to a place where, like I said, anyone will accept any kind of result. We are not there, Nigeria. We will not accept any other result but to win it. Yes, they would want to come and win it, but they will be under so much pressure. You remember. Like I said, they have not done too well in the qualifiers. And where they are, they don't have a very qualified coach that has taken them to this level. They're just playing by sheer gods. We have to win. I just, again, I say, we need to win. We just need to win for, for too many reasons. You know, that the, the support base is great. I hear that for the first time, the president has come in, sent money to the team. The players are smiling. They have enough cash in their pockets. They're sending some dollars back home to their families. Why are you thinking that people know why Bali's father's house? They're all going to check <laughs> because there'll be drinks. There'll be drinks and all that. I hope to go visit him today myself <laughs> and, um, and see if there are any leftovers from last night. And uh, but with my, my, my appeal, it has to be collective. My appeal, you know, I'm a pastor. So I've told my church members to wear Nigerian jerseys on Sunday and come to church. It has to be a collective thing that these boys will know that we're behind them. I think government officials, people around this, the, the country should organize and wear the Nigerian jersey as a sign of oneness. Let's just come together. I'm not sure Boko Haram kidnapped anyone last night That's where I'm where. because they were all celebrating. <laughs> That's what football can do for this country. That's how, how much unity we need. I will just beg on this our politicians to to look at it from that angle that we have feelings. You know, I had well, you guys talking about food stuff, bread. How can you win a match like this yesterday and you can't buy bread? It doesn't make sense. Mm. Well, I, I just wonder, I mean, I know the VP is there, the president sent him, and uh, he's also spoken about how they've attended to their needs. Yeah. Well, uh, who knows? Who knows if um, at the end of the day, anyway, we're all expected to come back with a trophy. But even government folks all over the place celebrating that the VP is right there right. Uh, in, with the team or hoping that um, the last match will be, as Mr. Peterson has said, it will be easy. Well, yeah, yes, you're in green, but um, I was going to ask you if it's football you like or tennis or I squash. Was, I was, I was, I was uh, a player myself. Oh, oh dear. I was there for the last in 1979. Did you watch the match though? Absolutely. All the, way, see it? all the way. I mean, I, I think I agree entirely with uh, uh, Peter Sai that, that we have a very good team. In, in my view, I think Nigerian, Nigeria's team is the best, you know, in this tournament. And all things being equal, we should, uh, we should, we should, we should lift the trophy on, on Sunday. I think it's also a good point that, that you have the vice president, you know, not mm. just watching the semifinals, but actually spending time uh, bonding with the team uh, and celebrating with them. That has a lot to do uh, in, in terms of pushing them forward, inspiring them to go forward. And I hope that uh, the vice president will stay there until Sunday, or the president himself goes there uh, to, 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 to witness the finals. Well, Very important. Something. But <laughs> do, do they always think, wait a minute, what if I go, because what if the president goes and the team doesn't win? Do they think about what the people will say? Well, I think. Well, it, it, look, the, the, the important thing, and, and that's the point about leadership, you know, uh, you have to just go out there and, and, and do the thing. 
I think that we have a very good chance of of carrying the state of winning the state. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know. So 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 it's uh, and it's an opportunity for the country. You know, like uh, as I said. Uh, it, it, it's like uh, we're we getting an opportunity to show that look, when we are united, we are unstoppable, and and and, and it's a moment that can be calibrated to push us forward as a people and as a government. You know, for those who are who are serving us. Ayo, thank you, Chimele. Well, let me begin with Mr. Peter Side. Um, I almost lost a bet on you yesterday. Well, it wasn't a bet really. But I was a friend of a friend like me was saying I'm not. I don't have the courage to watch this thing. But uh, I have to watch, and I don't want to watch. I have to watch, and I don't want to watch. I just said in passing. I said it's going to be two one victory. I said how do you know? I said well, someone told me in the morning. <laughs> so and that was you. So. Thankfully, we won by two goals instead of one. Uh, but, you know, generally, one of the concerns uh, that one of my colleagues here is, uh, is raising, well, maybe not a concern, but just a point of observation, you may want to speak to it. The fact that up until now, Victor Sime scored, and almost every time he scored, the goals were cancelled. Uh, for one reason or the other. Um, yeah, he facilitated almost all of the goals, but... What's going on with that one? Well, let him go and wash his head. Let him go and wash his head. You see, you know, bad boy. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, 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 don't, I don't think, I don't think that is the thing. But, you know, uh, most of the time, it's perhaps because, you know, um, VAR will always put him on the offside position and all of that. Is it yes, because yeah. he's been massively mar uh, marked by the various teams? He's, he's, absolute, he's the player of the tournament. You know, give it to him. He's the player of the tournament. He's just been unbelievable. He's, he's, he's forced. He's work rate. You know, he's leading this team. You look at it from every angle. He's not wearing the captain's bag, but he's the leader on and off the pitch. Look at doing the penalties. You understand? He was there at gym during the play. He's just been my, my man of the tournament. It's not about scoring individual goals to take individual glories now. It's about a collective victory, you know. Right? You, 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 it's Nigeria. It's unbelievable. It's beautiful. It's Nigeria. Nigeria wins when one when one person does well, and these young men are representing us. I've never felt like this in years. The last time was in South Africa when we won the Afcon, but this time, you know, with all the pressure in the land, what a relief! And you know, this morning. I drove to the market. I drove to go get some few things. People were in clusters, smiling, happy, just talking football. This is just what unites us in this country. You know, I was, I, I, was, I was, I was, was yeah. That's I, what I, was said to our leaders. Put some more interest. In I, I was going to ask a question as a result of that, uh, Mr. Peter Side. I was going to ask a question along yes. that line. Every time we win, celebration all over the nation it's like uh, a, a dash of forget your sorrows and there is jubilation everywhere in schools in yeah. hospitals people watched this yeah. match in hospitals in schools in government houses all over the place in various homes celebrations all over the place and we see even in the north massive following in the north nothing no politics and nothing is there any lesson in sports that can be particularly in football that can be cascaded into governance again and i think it's what we call one voice one voice once we leave talking sports a politician comes in the everything changes they begin to say things that disunite us they begin to say PDPA, PC, North, West. These are the things that destroy us as a nation. I think we should get to the point where we we'll stop one Nigeria. You know, if you see, if I see you now, you, you are maybe you are Yoruba from um, Rivers. If we meet at the airport in New York, immediately I will hold you and say, my brother, how you day? But we don't talk this talk. It, 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 I think it's a political class that has caused this in our in our in the country. The the, the words they use. The things they say, you say, uh, Ibonier, uh, Yorubani, uh, I was, no, we don't need those kind of talks. So those leading us, there must be an orientation. There must be an orientation that will begin to speak Nigeria. Those uh, uh, in the media, in the, in, the, in the media field, must begin to talk one Nigeria. 
if one politician comes in or one uh, uh, somebody comes in and begins to talk division, we shut him down. We tell him, no, this is not ac accepted here. And once we begin to change the mindset, I was very young years ago when uh, uh, um, I think it was Buhari then, you know, they brought this thing, war against indiscipline. You know, I was quite young, but you find that even in our schools, they will tell us war against indiscipline. When you get to a, a place, you queue up, you, put a, you throw a piece of paper on the floor, they are, you are asked to pick it up. The, our orientation is wrong. You go to, like, there are two people that are talking uh, uh, the economy here. You go to buy a piece of bread. Somebody tells you uh, because of the fuel. What you do, one country will buy cut that shop. We tell them if you don't bring your price down, you, we, nobody buys from you. You know, it's quite painful. And I think those that are in politics should listen to us. Okay. Don't listen to yourselves and drink champagne. Hear okay. us and see how we feel. And once you begin to talk, they begin to arrest you. Because they think you're talking politics. We're talking well, yeah. Nigeria here. Yeah. We must come to the place of Absolutely. unity mm -hmm. and talk Nigeria. Go to Africa because people are flying down. They are traveling down with one Jesse. Nobody knows which color of Jesse. You bring a well, governor to speak to you. Look at the behind him. He will put a flag. Well, your, 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 your passion, your passion is quite... All that. Yeah, your passion is quite communicable, Mr. Peter Side. But let me take the same question to Mr. Akonde in our Abuja studio. Having worked with politicians and knowing the way they think, Mr. Akonde, do you see a way of... I, mean, I want you to answer the same question. Uh, or a way of drawing some strong lessons from our sports, particularly football, into governance, not just politics. Yeah, very important uh, uh, two points, you know, that we can draw from it. First of all, is that we are a united people after all. We are united. That's the truth. The, the, the average Nigerian does see the other uh, man or woman as his brother or, or, or sister. That's how people relate, you know. So football shows this every time we're playing and we're winning. The second thing is that when we learn to put merit first, when we learn to put merit, merit first, we don't care who it is, we put the guy who can solve the problem in charge of the problem, then the problem will be, will be, will be solved. I think those are the two important points that we can get from this. There's unity, the people are united, and then when we do what it's supposed to do, well, what we're supposed to do, we get the results that we desire. All right, we need to wind down. So, Mr. Bittesite, are you in touch with anyone in SA? I hope everybody is fine over there. Yes, the, the, my biggest, the biggest problem we've had, we've had, gotten some messages where people have sent uh, uh, messages to the goalkeeper threatening him. I hear some people are telling him, don't come back to South Africa since you've, you, you didn't want us to score, stay back. When your team is playing, this this is unacceptable. We've not heard of any violence, but just threats. They've been threatening him and threatening some people, but why we didn't see any violence yesterday. All right. So we're hoping that it, we, we, everything stays calm because there has to be that spirit of sportsmanship. It's sports, for goodness sports. sakes. All right, we have to thank you for coming on. Uh, Ida Petitai, the former Super Eagles goalkeeper, and now look, the former presidential. Thank you both for coming on today. Thank you. All right, so that thank is the show. We thank you all for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. I thought it was actually Friday. All right, <laughs> we'll see you next time. Anyways, I'm Chamberlain or so. Have a wonderful day. And remember, energy, energy, energy. Let's, let's get this thing done by Sunday. Thank you so much for watching. I am Kayla Magua. In the meantime, please, keep the celebration going, whatever else. Keep your joy. I'm Ayo Makine. You have a wonderful day.